I want this to be done so badly. I really do. I need a break. Oh, I've got 20 days left and I'm just so out of it. Guys, I am at Adventure Van Expo right now. I don't have my mic on. This is actually on my phone right now, so I apologize. However, uh, it was a great show, Adventure Van Expo, up in Topsfield, Mass, which is like right down the street from me. I came up here just for a hot minute with my dad. He's actually back there. We just wanted to see a couple buddies. Nirvana Upfitters is here. Uh, Nick from Exploration Vans is here. Uh, Vancraft Camper Vans are here. Um, and a couple other people that I just really wanted to come up and say hi to. So I didn't do any video here, but if you are in the area and I got to say hi to you, thanks for coming by and saying hi. I've only here for one day because I need to get work done on the tiny house. So let's go back to the tiny and let's go show you guys what I've been doing and what I've been up to. And All right, everybody, we are at the shop today, and I had just that one day that up at uh, Adventure Van Expo. Sorry I didn't bring the camera and just kind of show you guys around. Really, I was just going there to kind of see the expo and see the show, and I'm just, was really just glad to support that it was, you know, that more of these types of shows are coming to the Northeast, which is where I am currently home based out of now, which is really nice. I'm from here originally, so it's just really nice to start seeing more and more van life pop up. For everybody that complains that there is no parking, you know, there's no like free parking. Um, there's actually a lot over here in the Northeast. It's just, it's not shared as much as it is out on the West Coast. Now there is obviously more land and more opportunity to park for free, but there is a lot of free parking out here. I've got some updates on the land, which I'll give you guys at the end of this video. Right now, I'm just doing a quick little portion of the video where I'm gonna fast forward to later uh, which is hopefully we're gonna get most of this done today. But um, my dad, Pops, just went down to get some pizza for lunch. And um, we did this exterior siding uh, a couple weeks ago uh, in this corner piece. And we started this side as well. We did that a couple weeks ago. But uh, today we started doing more. And I kinda wanna explain what the process of all this is just right now while he went to go get lunch. So we started doing over on the back side here this corner piece, we got that corner we gotta do, and the other corner we gotta do. But then you gotta do all this trim here at the bottom. So this is like a drip edge. It's color matched to match the siding with the drip edge. So you have to um, obviously measure out, you know, each where the drip edge is gonna go, uh, which we did here, you know, and then you gotta tape it off, you know, with the zip tape as I did. And then you got to put the corners on and then you can put the siding on. So it's not like you just slap the siding up there and call it good. There's a, actually a process to it. Even before all that, which I've talked about in other videos, you know, you got to prep the whole zip board itself. Talking to a lot of other tiny house builders and a lot of people that have done DIY tiny houses, not only do you zip tape the seams on this zip board, which is absolutely amazing, by the way, uh, you have to tape every seam, but I went over every single screw head that I went into, you know, the framing into, and I used the zip caulking or the zip butyl caulking, and you just go over every single screw hole, um, which is like a rubberized, like it's butyl based. So it's very like, it's just waterproof pretty much. You gotta then screw the corners off, and then you gotta put a zip, a thing of zip tape down the side of that. What we're doing here is we're preventing any leaks from happening anywhere so after we put the zip on or excuse me the corner on the zip tape then we put the siding on we use the tech screws you know which is recommended by you know other you know just everybody for when you put metal siding on and they have like little rubber rubber eyes like grommets at the the end there, like washers and when you suck them in they're just completely waterproof right there now we did obviously to match you can see we did it every 24 inches. So you have a row and then next 24 inches up, another row 
etc all the way up so it'll look when you're up close to it it'll look like it's supposed to like it, it it's like bolt it's, like it's gonna be pretty and then at the roof line we will put a uh another piece of trim that will go onto the roof that way and then down and then you lay the roof on top of that uh when i get to the roof we'll explain that we're not going to get to the roof today uh, but the roof is a standing seam roof it's just going to lay completely flat and then uh, standing seam roof, metal roof. I, I love standing seam roofs. They're so nice. They're clean looking, easy, easy, easy to install. Mounting the solar panels on those is, a, is I'm gonna get these brackets. I think they're called S5 brackets. So we're gonna get all that. That's gonna be in a completely different video, but I'm just kind of explaining to you guys the process of it all. And it's, it's not like I can just throw up all this stuff and it's all good. No, there's a lot to it. Here's the roof right here these are the angles that go onto the roof so i'll have a four inch overhang so the whole point of the four inches that come down matches the four inch trim so it'll be four inches on the roof four inch on each corner so it's kind of all matching now i ordered it that way you can order it you know i ordered it from home depot and they use a company it's a you know they're like a third party um and it was just easier that way it was all delivered to home depot they are actually no I had it all delivered, that's right. So it's gonna be nice and pretty when it's all done. I'll explain more at the end of the video here, but I wanna show you guys what I've done inside. We actually did a lot of uh, stuff in the bathroom. I've given myself roughly 22 days from when I'm recording this video. It'll be about 20, 21 days when this video comes out of how much time I have left to finish off the house because I gave myself August 20th to be done with the entire house. And that gives me a 10 day buffer to get the entire shop cleaned up, packed up, moved up into my storage unit, and then another day or two to move the tiny house to the land. And I hopefully, keep your fingers crossed, by the time this video comes out, I hopefully will have hired someone to do a land clearing so I can get that up my driveway, driveway laid uh, with a loose, hard packed loose gravel. Um, but we're gonna do a video on that when I get to that point. Right now, I'm just focused on finishing this bad boy up and then we'll figure out the rest after it's done. You can tell it's been a long day, a long weekend. We got finally good weather, it's not too hot. All right, I'll pick this up after lunch, towards the end of the day, actually in the evening. I don't know about you guys, but I am, I am exhausted. My dad has already left for the day, for the night. It's late, we put in probably a 10, 11 hour day today. I think I'm on my 12th hour. Quick updates on really what's going on. I told you guys I would kind of give you updates on the land clearing, the land development, uh, the stuff with the land is likely going to be happening, hopefully, third week of this month. Uh, I talked to a construction company. I've talked to actually three or four different construction companies. I've gotten quotes all over the place, but the most reasonable quote was right around fifteen to 20000 And that was from two different companies. And one, I was just really confident in working with. So he said he's gonna give me some final figures uh, this week, like next couple of days. More than likely, I'll have a deposit down uh, like you know Tuesday, which is the first. I think he said he's gonna get to it like the third or fourth week of August, which would be like the perfect timing of everything because I'm going to be packing this entire shop up, putting most of it into storage, which is practically right next to my property. And that gives me enough time to move the tiny house into its spot and I will more than likely, uh, I will have a driveway. That's part of the deal. Part of that whole 15 to 20 grand is gonna have like a hundred foot driveway, a landing pad, you know, where the house is gonna sit. At that point, we have marked out where the septic is gonna go and where the water well is gonna go, which have to be 100 feet apart from each other. And they have to be set back from the road a certain amount, and they have to be set back from any water sources or water like streams. And I have a setback from a stream that runs through the middle of my property. Power, um, I don't have to worry about because I'm running everything off grid power wise. Um, however, I am going to be doing some clearing on the other side of the property, on the other side of the land that is going to be where the garage and parking will be for guests. And maybe, maybe a small A-frame that I can, you know, Airbnb out or rent out or, or have guests stay in. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. I, again, I'm not making property decisions until I get up there and I pretty much have just a moment to like 
take everything in because it's been a year of building the tiny house and it's been a year of coming down to my shop and working on this tiny house for you know sometimes three hours sometimes 10 hours sometimes 12 hours sometimes eight hours so but it's been like five six seven days a week for the last year so it'll be nice to kind of like step back from that step back from the build and be able to focus on content creation which is part of the like in my house i have that little desk area that is an area for me to start talking more to camera and going on live streams and, and doing the really stuff that i really love to do which is sharing the knowledge that i have today we worked strictly on siding uh it's a it's really a two-person job that's why it's nice having a second set of hands here we finish off the back so let me walk under the back the light is gonna be fine but the, in the back it's not gonna be great as, as i move into the back it's just dark darkness uh the entire side is all done or the back i should say the back there's no windows here that is um absolutely on purpose my bed is right here on the inside a little window would have been nice right there should have thought about that ran uh the solar cable out this is the solar cable and then my short power plug to plug into probably a generator just in case i need it columns i almost said columns all of the uh oh my god i'm I, this is how tired i am this is how tired all the corner trim they are all in all of the pieces for the bottom are all in uh, I got a big ladder in my way, so let me move this. But, um, geez, a, a solid three quarters of these panels are all done. Um, you know, it's kind of, this is going to look so cool, by the way, in the woods. It's a little dusty and a little dirty. You probably not going to see it. I'm going to taped off right now, but all the windows are going to have an extra piece of black trim that goes around it. Two inches all the way around of extra, like, just like it'll trim out the window it'll be nice and pretty when it's all done very like modern i don't know industrial vibes i don't know probably got another four hours left to work that's a 12 foot piece that we screwed up on things happen just cut it cut it wrong a lot of a lot of wrong cuts not a lot there were some wrong like, that's what happens i wish i got that on camera and i didn't but there were some wrong cuts happened let me show you one of mine that i screwed up that is an eight foot piece right there and there's a little notch at the bottom yep measure twice cut measure twice cut once that little notch is an inch too high went too high screwed up it's not a wasted piece but kind of sucks all right let me take this light off too lazy to turn on my batteries for everybody and i'm sorry all right i get the light now Woo! heart lights man these things are so awesome portable battery powered lights the heart actually makes a lot of like things that not just tools but like really good for camping i already showed these shelves off walnut shell i mean pretty much everything in here is practically done uh i don't think i did anything in the living area other than like silly little trim pieces and like i put a trim piece underneath the fridge and i needed to do like i said really not much is really needs to be done here except i need to paint this wall i'm hopefully going to get to all those little things this week Move out day, August 20th. Bathroom, I don't think I showed any of this and I'll try to explain the best that I can in the short amount of time that I've got left on this vlog. Vinyl tile, 100% waterproof, interlocking, click click lock, whatever, uh, vinyl tile. It took me a while to find the color that I wanted. I was going to go with a Marlite. It's a company that makes like a, a fiberglass or, or like a, frp panel i should say i think it's i think it's frp but they make it look like brick and i want it they they can sell it in four by eight sheets but it's expensive i got a quote from them to do this wall this wall behind me this wall and this little wall and it was going to cost me 1900 dollars. and i was like no no not happening i wanted like a white brick with like a black grout is really what i wanted and i could do tile the problem is tile is going to weigh an exorbitant amount of weight having everything tiled in here. Now, if this was a stationary house, I would consider it. But if this house moves, which it's going to, it's going to move from where I'm standing in right now to up to my property. It's going to weigh a lot, especially here in the front. I didn't want to do that. I went with a vinyl tile. Um, I found this. I think the company was Best Laminate. Uh, but we've gotten this whole wall done. And then <laughs> all of our measurements. Uh, and then we got some of this wall done. We were just kind of waiting for it to dry. Um, I'm going to continue on with it probably on my on my own because my dad's not gonna have the time to really give me a hand with this. 
but he got me started and that was my biggest worry. I just needed to get started. And then so I see where everything's going and my buddy Mark is really going to help me out or he has helped me out or he's going to be helping me out. He's sending me a care package uh, for some water stuff that I need to fix down there. So he's done a lot of off grid houses. Luckily, he's going to send me some stuff and we're going to be able to get after that. I want to get the rest of this tile up, rest of the shower up. I got a glass wall going in and then I got to put my incinerator toilet in. And that's that's going to be a lot of work. I started working on all the draw fronts. There's a draw front down there. This uh, is all going to be capped off, all going to be capped off. Washer dryer right here. Uh, and then this is all going to be a design element that's going to match the rest of this down here. I'll save that. I'll keep that as a surprise for everybody. I'm tired. I don't know. I am, I'm just, I'm so loopy. I think it's time, guys. I got to call it for tonight. Oh my God, I'm tired. I want this to be done so badly. I really do. I just, I want, I want to be over with this. I, I need, I need a break. Oh, I've got 20 days left and I'm just so out of it. I'll see you next time. Later.